Hey guys, welcome back. We're here again with Brett Sankis and we're going to dive even deeper into the differences and the comparisons between the two. So stay tuned. I think that there's a lot of pressure coming out of law school to work for the biggest firm that you can, to work for the biggest name that you can, with the understanding that you'll be doing a year or two of grunt work and then you can leave and do the thing you really want to do, whether that's going in-house or going to a smaller boutique firm. And I know that that's a really tough question for a lot of associates to, to answer. And I'm just interested if you have any thoughts on, on your path or if you would have done it differently or if your decision really worked out well. Right, yeah, so I made exactly this decision. When my second year I summered for a relatively small regional firm, very entrepreneurial, uh, former big firm, uh, well, big regional firm lawyers, I mean, great lawyers in a, in a southern city, and then a massive New York-based corporate law firm. And I made exactly this decision. And I made this decision over, the money wasn't much of a driver. There was a little, a, a little, a little bit more at the big firm, but not really enough to probably make the decision. It was the name on the resume, and yeah, I made that decision to take that name, and it was the right decision. And that's a very personal decision, and it's always hard. I mean, you don't want to encourage people to be miserable in life, but there is the idea: of pay the price of pay the price of sacrifice, or pay the price of regret. So some of this depends too with how much how important your career is to your overall life, right? And how much you want it to be a part of it, as opposed to this is the way I make money. So that's separate from work-life balance. It's like, how important is it to you to have opportunities in the career? Then there's a real, something to be said for paying the dues and getting names on the resume early on to open up those avenues. Because the school I went to and the firm I worked for unquestionably have opened up a tremendous number of avenues to me that would not be open otherwise. I mean, it's a cluttered, busy world. We're all time starved. It's like people look at a resume and they're like, uh oh, right? So um, there is no question corporate lawyers are feeding into companies and places like they're already planning kind of their next step. A lot of them are planning their next step out of private practice and having a bigger name is 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 important to there. For most of my corporate uh, associate peers, they were planning their next step. I mean, they were, they were, that was, this was a two, three, four year stop and that was what it was. It's interesting that you say that about corporate lawyers because I, you know, generally speaking, I know you guys are much more business minded in, in terms of, you know, strategically your next step. And I think as litigators, at least the, the young litigators that I was working with, all of us really were on the law firm track, meaning we were thinking of making partner down the line. We weren't really looking to go anywhere unless, of course, if you started at a big law firm, most people are looking to go to a litigation boutique at some point because, again, you get more substantive experience, you have a better chance at making partner. And so a lot of people were making that move, but I don't think that there were very many people, for example, looking to go in-house or looking to start their own law firms. Um, looking to you know work with a government agency or a nonprofit, there were a few. But I I don't know in terms of corporate lawyers, it's 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 so interesting to hear that you guys are already planning your next step. And I think that's honestly a weakness of of young litigators is we don't really think outside of the law firm tunnel. You know, we're looking at making partner, and there's no real plan B if making partner doesn't work out. Thank you guys so much for watching. And again, special thanks to Frank Sankas for coming by. I'm linking his YouTube channel in the description below. So please go check him out. He does all types of law related videos on new lawyer trainings, transactional work, especially mergers and acquisitions. So you guys should definitely go give him a look. And as usual, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up, comment below, share it with somebody you think would benefit from it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe to see new videos every Tuesday. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.